Hey guys, I'm gonna say the rule for number ten is uh, leave an impact and uh, make, or sorry, make an impact and leave a legacy. So the idea of this is, if you're on Earth and you're here for a finite time, um, live up to your namesake, or make your name mean something, or make make your time on Earth mean something, and make people remember your name. How about that? Uh, that sounds interestingly uniquely put, but that's I guess the best way to communicate it. So. Make, make people remember your name. How about that? Do something worthwhile, do something memorable, do something useful to where you've done enough on Earth that people actually just go, hey, this guy really lived his life. This guy really did something on Earth. This guy really was a memorable guy. But um, he did something meaningful. You know, he wasn't just someone who just passed through and just went through the motions and didn't really contribute much. So what I'm thinking of, like, at least I'll, I'll give you this of my life first and then I'll go from there. But what I want to do in my life is I want to uh, produce music to some extent. I really, what I mainly want to do is get into media. And um, what I actually want to do is I have a lot of relationships and make a lot of women really happy. But I also want to have friendships too, and I want to just like be comfortable in life and on earth with uh, the people that matter most to me. Because to quote from Dr. Seuss, other people just don't really mind anyway, so it shouldn't really matter. But those people just don't matter in the long run because they're not the people who matter most, and then they're not the people who would be around me anyway, so they wouldn't really have an effect on me, that's why it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, is the point of that, the point that I was making. Anyway, um, the idea of this is um, if you want to do something at art, maybe maybe you can make it uniquely yours so much so that it ends up in a museum. Maybe you can create a game or, or publish a game, I guess they call it, like I'm thinking like 10 or something, that um, goes down history based on being a game people have to play. Uh, maybe you can um, create, um, uh, I, I don't know what they do in Korea, I'm just trying to even come up with ideas or suggestions that maybe people in Korea could do if they don't, if they don't have anything in mind already, but if they do, then start even bothering you like by all means live away and go do that i'd love to check out your museum someday and go see what you guys are, are doing but i mean i love youtube so i get to see a lot of awesome uh, artworks or musical production works or whatever you want to call them um on youtube compositions yes um so that's cool um but also um i do um just say it's it's really interesting because at the end of the day, I think I think Chris Brown's fame album really sums it up the best. I'm just saying, you know, what you do leaves an impact based on who you are as a person, and your fame is your infamy. And um, I did use that term specifically, so it's like condone and condemn. Uh, if you get it, you get it. So um, I guess I do have to explain it just once. Is it infamy? Is different than infamy? So if you're infamous, then you are in indeed famous. But if you're infamous, then you're just you know committing acts of infamy. And that doesn't mean anything except you're probably just trying to eat plants, which is probably just meaning you're just a zombie going through the motions and, you know, it doesn't mean much. So, anyway, um, the idea of um, being, well, how about this? Can you hang 10? Because that's the idea, right? If you can do that on Earth, then you can probably get pretty far because if you're trying to leave an impact and you can hang 10, you can do it in like a second, right? So, um, that's just that's just something to keep in mind because if you can't, if you can't do that, then man, your Hawaiian aloha must have been or must be or must be be or, or will be something that'll be you know just a weird thing i always forget there's that one thing that always throws you off i don't know it's just a weird thing that it's always like in, in general so i mean that but <laughs> anyway uh, it's just one of those things that um, just kind of i don't know if you can do it you can just survive life you can uh, ride the tides you can uh, rip curl when the wave hits and you can you know uh maybe even meet that awesome boy girl after it's you know meet at the, the luau beach party after <laughs> anyway um i was gonna say do something on earth and do it well do what you do best and do it in a way that leaves an impact and um, really just lets you uh, stand out in your field or craft or sect. Um, do it uniquely in the way you do it, so there shouldn't be any need to impinge upon anyone else's even speeches, because it doesn't, because it's uniquely just yours. Like, there's no other Picasso other than Picasso, right? There's no more Claude Monet than Claude Monet. <laughs> if you look at a Rembrandt, you, can, you can't argue that it's not a Rembrandt. You, can, you can't compare a Rembrandt to like a Claude Monet. <laughs> one is watercolor and one is simply Rembrandt. <laughs> so, and I know this because I went with the, to the Louvre and other museums um, in uh, France in different regions. I had to go to all the museums in Paris. I also went to some museums outside of Paris. I think the Rodin Museum is a little bit outside of Paris, but I'm not sure. I can't remember quite right now. I'll tell my head where it is, but I think uh, anyway, I went to a lot of museums, and some of them were definitely outside of Paris. Um, anyway, if, you, if you're good at making wines or champagnes, do that. And I, I know Dom, Pion's, uh, Dom Perignon is a prevalent name in champagne in the champagne industry. So if you're good at something, go down in history for it. Um, because whatever it is, um, if there's uh, if it's something you're good at and you can sell it, there's a whole mass of fields you can sell it. There's the culinary fields, there's the media fields, there's the artistic fields, there's the human personal fields, like a TED Talker, a leader, a speaker. Like, um, there's a political field, like Che Guevara, who uh, is probably the most controversial politician you would pick on the top of my head. But maybe Abraham Lincoln would be a better example. Um, 
in the personal arts, humanitarians, Gandhi is an example of one. Um, he actually rose to prominence in his country. He actually created his own country, or rather, because it used to be a British subcontinent, and then it became the country of India. So there it was. He was a humanitarian and a leader. He led by not doing anything harmful or um, anything like that, but he was a spiritual leader, and that's how he gained prevalence. So that's just you know a way that people can manage to accomplish things. There's also Mother Teresa, so two examples. But anyway, um, another example is... Um, Maybe through uh, novel or literary arts, like um, the only author comes to name right now is Bob Edger, or um, sorry, DJ McHale, he's one of my favorite authors. Um, the uh, other prevalences that I can think of are video game designers, because I love some video games. I think Metal Gear Solid 4 is truly a massive game, but I think Legend of Zelda series is something special on its own, too. So the whoever designed those games definitely has a special knack for creativity and for communicating certain things in regards to uh, certain things. But I think Chrono Cross is probably the best game of all time, in my opinion. And that the, the ability for them to tell stories is just like one of the best things ever. And the music just really puts it over the top. So that's just something awesome. And that game, playing that game, gave me like one of the best experiences of my life, um, as well as some other things. It's so like not not that it's like comparable, but it just gives you a different experience. It's more immersive than a movie, but it still gives the opportunity to experience something new and different in a way that's awesome. Also, the game tells is a funny, it's a cool game too. Um, almost didn't mention that. But anyway, um, friendship and partying, and um, what you've done to the impact of the, your friends and families and relatives is, is the point I want to make, yes. that's I had to think about it for a sec, but that's the point I want to make. Because at the end of the day, you want to be remembered um, by people you love most as someone who helped their lives or was meaningful and impactful in their lives. Because you want to be buried somewhere. I guess you want to be buried or cremated or whatever with people, whatever your choice is. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you want to feel like you made those people's lives better by being a part of them. You wouldn't want to feel like you burned your loved ones, right? Which you would think so. I would, or I don't think so. So I don't know. Um, at the end of the day, you want to feel like, you know, you had a place on earth and a, and a home. You know, you felt like you want to feel like you really belonged on Earth. Like you, you know, had a, had a place here. And they, they, they used to say, home is where the heart is. But I now I just say home is where I am. So I'm just always at home. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're, if you're, um, I don't know. I don't want to even consider the F. Um, so I'm just going to say, feeling that you're, you know, at home on Earth. <laughs> so comfortable being human. So, or being human. However you want to put it. Or, uh, I'll, or I'll put it. Comfortable being human. So that. But anyway. That's what it feels for me to, you know, uh, do that thing to a certain extent. And then I'll say this, you should leave a legacy. You should do something in your namesake for other people. Um, there's a Greek proverb that I think is really good, and it's that a civilization grows great. Sorry. Someone's coming up to quote this, I guess, differently. But um, at least in my mind, that's, that's what it seemed like. But a civilization grows great when uh, men plant the trees of orchards they will never get to sit in the shade in. Because you want to build a better world for your kids. Because even if you can't enjoy it now... You want to be able to work towards it because it could be a goal that benefits people later. That's like the uh, metaphor of the ant and the cricket. So in this story, the ant um, worked all. I guess I think it was the ant that worked all summer, um, building his life and building his goals and doing the things he had to do to get things in order for everything to work. Whereas the cricket just sat around and said, "Oh no, I'm just gonna play stupid games, should win stupid prizes, or something like that." I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, this did not work well for the cricket because whenever winter came around, suddenly the cricket goes, "Oh wait, I need food to eat," and the ant goes, "Well, I worked all summer to get food. That's what I did." And the cricket goes, no, I don't need food anymore. And the ant goes, well, I just, I mean, that, that's what I eat. I'm mocking Jay, by the way. But anyway, the cricket goes, oh, well, all I did was just play around all day. So now I actually don't know what food is. I actually don't know how to eat. Can you just, like, give me some of your food? And I, as, a cricket, as an ant, would go, well, I can't because I'm an ant. You're a cricket. You don't even get the same thing, dude. <laughs> but um, if I wanted to you know, be uh, a nice man, and I am, I'd say, I'll spray some rice. How about that? You can go get some rice. We get you by, at least you'll survive. So, yeah, have a nice winter. But anyway, um, that's, that's the story. And there's some, a lot of wisdom you learn from uh, Chinese, or Japanese stories. So if you've never read any, even if you're not Japanese, maybe check one up. Check one up from the library. Um, and maybe you'll get to, you know, get a, a better depth in the, um, the tradition or the poignancies or the, or the interest, nuances, the intricacies of the Japanese culture. So that. Um, but I guess... Another thing um, to keep in mind is what your impacts do to help people. So when you do something on Earth and it's impactful towards people or towards civilization as a whole, what is its, it's what is its is its resounding impact in regards to how does it continue to make people feel? Like I remember this book, The Hungry Caterpillar, that I read in um, art class. And it's just a book that just seemed to have like the best like reverberant impact in a, like, its respective area because it was such just like a nice book about just a hungry little caterpillar. And I don't know what else to say about it, but it just seemed to be. Like that exact kind of thing, and it won an award for its um, for its um, unique impact on children, and uh, the fact that they loved it. So, I mean, that's a cool thing. Um, in my world, I don't know what else I would do, um, except maybe 
know, someday I think I'll, I'm gonna pursue other things, but I'm gonna do it on, as like an as an as I basis because I can't tell you now I'm 29, so like it's hard for me to even imagine what I'd be doing when I'm like 60. <laughs> Except a weird thing to be last night that I think that me and my friends by the time we're like 70 or probably probably like later than 70, but who knows? We're probably we were so 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 much of degenerates. Uh, I stuttered or stumbled over my words every second. They were probably betting on who's gonna die first, which is because we're so old and bored and. Um, it's not going to be depressing at that point, because at that point I think we're going to be ready to pass, but yeah, maybe, maybe it'll be old, maybe like a hundred, who knows. Anyway, uh, I, think, I think the point is to keep in mind is we'll still be like bros or buddies or whatever, how do you want to call it, so at least there's still that, because at the end of the day, camaraderie wins overall, so, or wins through all, or beats all, so that's just a, a cool, positive note that you can keep in mind, so. Um, anyway, um, something else to keep on, to, to live on, is your legacy, yes. I remember seeing this one thing on Reddit about um, two soldiers who fought in a war together. And unfortunately, one of the soldiers passed following the war, but prior to his passing, the soldiers made a bet, or a pledge to each other, that if one of them were to pass, it was, uh, I think it was a dare, actually, that one of the soldiers had to show up at his funeral wearing a red dress. I think there were snipers and, like, green or something like that. I don't want to, I don't say too much because I don't remember the exactness of the story, but for us to say, um, the soldier did end up showing up at his friend's funeral in the red dress, as was promised, on, his, on a solemn oath. And I remember seeing the picture on Reddit when he was broken down and crying in the red dress of the loss of his friend. The fact that he was still wearing the red dress was still like the most beautiful thing and the most beautiful symbolism of friendship in my mind. So kudos to that. If you've never seen that before, it's, I don't know if it's still around, but if you get the chance to experience it, um, it's just something beautiful to know that, you know, sorry, I, I can't phrase it in words, but it's just a beautiful thing to experience um, the beauty of other life on earth. And <laughs> that's, that's the only point I'm trying to make from that. Nothing else. <laughs> so that, but, um, Anyway, it just it um, it's um and I'm not gonna talk anymore because I don't over talk. That's I know I know my limits. Please, if that's my existential wife. Just cut me off. <laughs> I'm just I'm trying to get I'm trying to get this under down down pat. Or sorry, I should be looking at the camera down pat. But um, anyway, um, what I uh, do? Huh? One steery? I see. That would be a bulb without nuts. Let me just talk to the next guy. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> Steering monster? Yeah, who knows? Is it Mexican steering frog? Because if so, he should get in that car with that baby. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, uh, I'm talking about now. Um, what else? Let's see what else, what else can even tie into this. Uh, this is what number am I on now? Am I on the number ten still? Yeah, I'm on the number ten still. So um, I think of YouTube. I think of my legacy, and I think of my channel personally. So this is this is the legacy I'm leaving to the earth. I'm talking about all the things I want to talk about, and you can check them out here for uh, as long as as long as I know time exists. So <laughs> you can see my videos forever. Um, I'll be it'll be it'll still be the same videos of me having had talked. I'm sorry this is tripping me out now even thinking about it. I don't even know why I would even have to explain this. So well, sorry brain for even thinking about it. Stupid con carne, apparently, <laughs> or stupid con leche, please, with, uh, with, with milk, with milk. <laughs> no, no meat, no meat. <laughs> anyway, um, ah, oh, jeez. Um, I don't want to talk about the Rorschach test, Tom. <laughs> but, um, what I do, uh, want to get into is, um, two things. First of all, Rachel Myers, how are you? And you still have ladder ball. We should definitely go to the fly and Audubon and play ladder ball. At least to excess, because that game never gets old between us, okay? <laughs> um, also, Taylor Schramm, you should totally come over, we should totally have a kid together. If I, did, or I just said, let's bang, would you be offended, or would you be less offended? Because I get you, but only in so much as I would say it out loud, only do you. Taylor Schramm, let's bang. <laughs> but, anyway, <laughs> but anyway, only in the least appropriate. Taylor, you should really come over and make me that pie. <laughs> or sorry, bake me that pie. Come on, words, woman. Seriously, Jesus. <laughs> also, Taylor Parisi, um... Am I, am I doing well? Because I can turn this thing around if I have to, but only if I have to. <laughs> um, so that's those are just some people my the playing playing on my or uh, represent me some of my representatives I guess on my, my home team. I I didn't realize. Sorry, Brady. I'm gonna hit you up. And I'm just what's what's the deal with that? So what's up? What, what, what's with that? I don't know. <laughs> I just I, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I just didn't know what's going on. <laughs> so we're working that out now. Okay. Um, is that actually is that actually heat? I didn't realize it was actually. Heat. I, I was doing that jokingly, but now I know. So now I know. Okay, so that's heat. Okay, got it. Okay. So anyway, what was going on with that? Is is now a strange thing? See, we're we're we're, doing, we're moving on to something else here. It's just like business stuff to be pre <laughs> um, referred to, or um, prefer, prefer preferably referred to as being priority. So I was gonna say, um, what it, what was it? It was my uh, representatives in my home. What? In the house, 
I mean, this is dollhouse, so you know. <laughs> um, but they're like girl. It's a, so one's 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 my baby mama, one's my wife, and one's um, also my wife. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I just had a little bit of life. <laughs> so that's just you know that's kind of what's going on in my world. Um, welcome to my world, the world of Henry. <laughs> um, it's just it's just my world. But um, you haven't seen much of it because I haven't been on YouTube that much because I've been doing other things like traveling around the world. So if you want to read about that and my travels around the world, you can read the blog. But now the world, I guess, can watch just watch me on YouTube if they want to find my channel. I don't know. So anyway, anyway, um, this is um, this is just me. This is you like, now learning more continuously about me. You've met me before in real life, a lot of you. And you, you know me on a personal level. But I know maybe you, none of you have ever like heard me open up to you guys or, or to you all. I'll say you all about my like... Uh, inner life or whatever so yeah, this is here it is this is me just talking about my actual life and myself and me just being me so here's here's what i'm like 100 fully percent authentically and truly me so um hope you respect me for being who i am hope you like me for being me and i hope you like me uh for being someone who is me and will never change that but if you want to adjust the grade scale you can do that how about that but in the ways that you can you can comment you can rate subscribe uh, if you're Andrew, you can spuck it up in the bedroom. And uh, if you're Mindy, you can respond to me, please, on Twitter, because I'm feeling like really a bit, like hurt and like um, ignored. And that just like that just hurtful me, Mindy. Like, what the hell? I thought it was your prom date. Like, where, where did that excitement go? Is some excitement through Grady's go? Because I just I just say you leave her with her default setting, which is hot in, in my in my league. So <laughs> anyway, um, I think. Uh, ugh. Sorry, uh, something, I think something weird just happened. There's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> I don't know what went on, but um, I think, uh, no, was it, was it thing about it? I don't even remember. Um, what, I was, what I was thinking about was, oh, other people, no, it wasn't other people. Um, oh, other people I should call out in existence. I'm going to call out, who would call out? Uh, I'm gonna call out. Oh, well, I already did another video, so <laughs> that's gonna confuse. Um, I'm gonna call out someone for for something in real life. I'm gonna call out. Okay, Zach. I'm gonna call out Zach Ryan. I'm gonna call out um, Laura Kimmel. I'm gonna call out Brian Brady uh, to join me as cast members on SNL because I want to do something that can top the Mad Men uh, party thing that John Mulaney and his friends threw when he was the cast member or writer, I mean, on SNL. So that's, that's my, that's my goal. And I can't think of anyone else who would be, uh, to be wanting to do SNL, but I, I heard, I heard one name drop and I'm, I'm like wondering if that person would actually be a good fit to SNL. I don't know. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to think of like who I might like be able to picture doing SNL. Like, I don't know. Maybe David Barnum. Like, I don't feel like he'd be an SNL guy. I feel like he'd be more of like a different kind of guy. I don't even know. See, I don't even know. That was, what was that name again? <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm wondering. It's like, man, if I, if I could just hear that name, it was like, huh? I step back to reality? Okay, I see. Oh, well, there goes gravity. I'm still thinking about it, so. I just won't think about anything anymore. And uh, I keep things in mind. Like, oh, I'm still dreaming of it. I'm still like thinking like, actively. I'm not dreaming. Because I'm not like visualizing, but I'm still like, I'm trying to think of who I'd want to be on SNL with, or is it all just done? And I just don't think about it anymore. That, that's what I'm wondering about. Because if this is just like destiny now, and it's just like I'm just destined to be with the exact people on SNL, or like it's or sorry Dharma, it's just like one of those cool things. But I'm still like dreaming about it. Cause at some point, I'd probably like, well, I just want it to happen. So I don't know. Uh, anyway, I uh, do know that. Uh, well, I don't know who would be like a good fit for SNL. I don't know. I have to like maybe see people more in real life and just go with real life. I don't know. If I can follow one person, I guess I follow Pete Buttigieg. And just say I bet I can keep up with you if I can get some girl on the level of the Kardashians. <laughs> um, that's that's one of them. I guess they call it Justin Bieber and say I bet if I can get a beauty that girl's Taylor Schramm, I can throw it on a fat beat and I guess you'd, I bet you'd love it. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to guess I'm going to bet well, I'm not going to do anything because I'm not on Mario Up 2 and I'm not from DC. So I'm not going to stop throwing that word around because I don't know what the deal is with that, what I was going to do. But I will say, um, whatever's going on just happened organically. So there's no um, negative from my perspective. And I don't know what's going on. 
or if anyone has argued anything's a problem, but I've done everything like by the books, so I have no idea like what even could be a problem. So anyway, I'm just gonna keep talking, and uh, also Christina Slaughter, just come check out how good I like these sweatpants. These are really nice sweatpants. I don't know if you can see it from there. I'm not gonna move the camera. You should just come check them out. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're like they're like my favorite color of gray. <laughs> Um, I have, um, oh, I have one more thing to shout out to someone, and that's that I still don't like the Ravens, but that's, that's all. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a big rivalry for us uh, Steelers fans, so, um, also, I want to call it Nick Bassett, because I want to see him do a Foxtrot, or a Flanco, actually, rather, and I want to see him do it live on stage, and I want to at least either see how you two or be able to be a judge for it, because I would love to do that, because I think he can do it, and I believe in great things from him. If he doesn't have my sister as a partner, I don't know if he'd have, because he should really get my sister as a dance partner. Because she was talking about, I think she just wants to dance. I don't know. Anyway. Um, she was, she, I think she, the idea came to her to be part of a dance competition, and she just like didn't know where to go with it. So I think if you, if you could just like um, throw out your name to her as a partner in real life, she would love that. And um, maybe just use all the resources available on YouTube to learn how to dance. <laughs> And not you know bitch and make excuses about it. So maybe that because you know if you if you want to learn anything on earth, you can do it on YouTube. Like I learned like everything from watching John Green. That's like cool and interesting, like factually, naturally, and the rest of history. So like if you is there anything you want to learn like about psych like John Boston, if you want to learn about psychology, you can just check out uh, Crash Course on YouTube, and it'll teach you like everything you ever wanted about psychology. Like everything that's ever like unless you want to be like a professor or like write the theories about it, it's like everything you could ever practically want to know. So, um, but also. Um, yeah, I think in, in real life, if you want to be good at something, just like learn based on the material that's available on Earth, and then just like um, practically um, apply that knowledge or whatever to doing something impactful on Earth or meaningful on Earth. I'll say, um, but in, unless you want to theorize something, or in which case you theorize like one thing. Like I theorized that one thing the other day that black holes and white holes were somewhat connected, and that black holes were just like sucking up all the matter on Earth, and white holes were evading them. So there's that. But um, anyway, that's that's one thing that I did on Earth. So I can cross that off my. Uh, existential to-do list <laughs> but anyway um hope you guys are having a good day and i might take a break to have breakfast but i'll be catching back up to you guys later for part 11 of the human evolution series